Author Juno Diaz is an immigrant who grew up in New Jersey. He won the Pulitzer Prize back in 2008 for his best-selling book. Remember this? The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. It topped a BBC culture poll of the best novels of the 21st century. Now Diaz is releasing his very first children's book. It's called Island Born. The book draws on his experiences as a young immigrant to the U.S. from the Dominican Republic. Juno Diaz joins us at the table. We are delighted about that. Here's a book you said that makes you happy. <laughs> Those were your words, Juno Diaz. Yes. You said this book actually makes me happy. And I guess that we can thank your goddaughters for that. They asked you to do this about 20 years ago. Yes. Why did it take you so long? Uh, I, I'm really, really slow. I feel terrible <laughs> about it. I have a picture of them of when they asked me and a picture of them when they got the book, and it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, what did they say to you at the time? Uh, you know, they, they, they like most children, when they find out that you're a writer, the first thing they say is, write me a book, man. Yeah. Make it fast, okay. yo. Yeah. And I'm um, the last thing. I'm not any, anything but fast. Well, it's so interesting. In your own life, you didn't have a children's book. You didn't read children's book, you said, growing up. Yeah. I mean, I, I came from a community where the only book that I grew up around in the, in the Dominican Republic was the Bible. Uh -huh. And it was a real adult-centric. You know, as a kid, you look at the pages and you're just like, yeah, there's nothing there for me. You know? Yeah. When you're writing at all, or in this book, is it that your that ideas have to ripen there in your head, or you're just getting distracted by other things? And was there an idea here that ripened, and then you thought, okay, now it's time to write? Yeah, I think what ends up happening is, if a book you want people to fall in love with it, and love is super rare. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really rare. Some of you perhaps not rare, uh, but. Uh, you know, to fall in love with a book uh, requires a lot of work. And if I want someone to fall in love with my book, mm -hmm. I got to fall in love with it. So that takes just a lot of work. Well, let's talk a little bit about the book. So Lola is the main character, and she is island-born, but she can't remember the island, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us, uh, a lot of us can't remember our origins. Yeah. It's one of the one of the things that happens, and we're surrounded by them. We hear our parents talking all the time about places they grew up around or events that happened before we could remember. Um, we grew up with grandparents who often bring an entirely different world. We're shaped by places and people that we've never, ever met. And that's something important to recognize. No, and our, and it, go ahead. our origins are a part of our, our identity. So this is about identity formation about from places you were from. How does that process take place for, a, for an older person, but also for then a little kid? I think that we tell each other stories. I think all of us, when we think about our grandparents, if you have the fortune to grow up around your grandparents, you, if you're, again, you're lucky enough, you remember how gentle they are, how caring they are, but you also remember their stories that seem to come from another planet. Um, and stories bind us across time and across space. But I, we have to point out the illustrations. We'll show some of them while you're talking. But one of my favorite lines in the book to Lola, she says, just because, her grandmother says, just because you don't remember a place doesn't mean it's not in you. You never name the island specifically. And you never, and there's a monster, of course, which you, there's always a good monster in a book because with monsters come heroes. You never name the island and you never name the monster. Why? I think it's important to leave space for people to play and for people to project their own imaginations and their own experiences. Also, my goddaughters were raised both in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't lock one Playing favorites? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't get any more trouble. You know, let me ask you about a teacher you said was really influential. I'm fascinated by these connections teachers make with students. You said that the teacher took you to the library and at that moment changed your life. Why? Because in some ways, uh, we need models to understand what we could possibly become. Until that moment, I had no idea that it was possible to somehow live a life with books. I assumed I could be a ball player. Maybe if I was super brilliant, I could be the doctor we saw every now and then. But the idea that you could live a life with books, and this librarian um, gave that to me as a gift. She showed me a door that I could possibly walk through, and, and because of her, I walked through it. And guess what? Now you're the teacher. You're teaching writing at MIT. I am. A, what do you think it's like for your students? Do they know that it's you who's up there teaching? Do you think they know who's teaching them? Nah, most of them are so busy trying to fill classes and being like <laughs> overwhelmed by everything that's happening that they don't do a lot they of research. They don't know you're a Pulitzer Prize winner? I think maybe a few, but most of them walk in and they're What's like, your lesson to them? What's your first lesson when they walk in the door? What's your lesson? Yeah, probably first, uh, you know, if you, can't, if you don't got any room for this class, don't take it because they're overwhelmed. And second, <laughs> you know, the absolute importance of stories. Yeah. 
and it sometimes takes 20 years, maybe? In other yeah, words, yeah, they yeah. don't want to just, you know, just get on the word processor, okay, I'm done by lunch. Yeah, I don't want to tell them that at the beginning about anything, because <laughs> they, they want to be billionaires before the semester's over, so I don't want to discourage, you know, how much time it often takes. Mm -hmm. So you say regardless of what kind of writer you are, whether you're a beginning writer, an acclaimed writer, it all starts for you with the story. And the, the stories that are not being told. I mean, we live in a society that defines itself not by the stories it tells, by what it doesn't tell. And what you are as a writer is a person who's telling the stories that we don't tell. We don't want to tell certain kinds of stories. We feel uncomfortable. And, but if you really are interested in being an artist, the same way as being a journalist, you find the stories that people are ignoring. So not to focus on the hard part of writing, what about the hopeful part? Uh -huh. That getting you through the occasional moments where you have to you know, work a little harder than maybe... Well, so as I said, you, you're driven by the fact that you love this form. I mean, I love reading, deeply love reading. Um, every time I lose hope or I lose track, I just read a couple books to rekindle the fact that this is what I do is give people the opportunity to fall in love. Fall in love with a book, fall in love with a story, fall in love with a character. And that's not a small thing. Yeah. I've experienced it. I know what it can do to you. That's right. It's the center of our lives. Juno Diaz, thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice pleasure. to meet you.